Hello everyone, welcome to the seventh episode of this series where I design a 909 rim shot Eurorack module. In this episode we will assemble the PCB and put the module together and we will of course listen to it as well. But first of all, let's unpack the PCB delivery from JLC PCB. For those of you that are new to JLC PCB, the minimum order quantity for prototype PCBs are 5 pieces. If you stay within the size limit of 100 times 100 mm, you will pay around $2 for 5 boards. I paid little over 6 US dollars for these 5 boards, shipping and other costs included. But before we start the build, let's have a look at some tools that you need to have. A good soldering iron or a soldering pen is a must. I use a soldering station from KS Gear that uses a 70 watt Hakko T12 cartridge. We will start by soldering the, all the SMT components on the PCB, so we will need a smaller tip. I have a 3D printed stand where I store all the cartridges I have. It makes it easier to keep track of them that way. Another important thing is to have good ventilation. I don't have a professional fume extractor, but instead I have a 3D printed housing with a 120mm computer fan and a carbon filter at the front. It is powered by a 12 volt DC wall plug. And we will also need some solder, a pair of tweezers, and of course we need some SMD components. A good way of getting started with SMD is to buy a sample kit. It's a binder with short strips of the most common values of resistors and capacitors, and you can add more components and values to it as you go. It is always a good idea to buy more components than you need. I buy SMD components in a minimum quantity of hundreds or thousands, unless they are very expensive of course. Depending on your eyesight, you may want to have a magnifying glass, a magnifying lamp or a microscope. In my case I have a digital microscope and there are different price levels for these. If you are going all in, a stereo microscope is the best, but that is a little bit too expensive for me. Ok, let's get started. Let's bring up the eye bomb so we can locate the components and keep track of which components we have soldered in place. In contrast to through hole components with SMT you can basically place the components in any order. I prefer to start with semiconductors first, since they normally are the most tricky ones to solder. But there's no right or wrong here, you can basically do it any order you like. Next step is to solder the passives, and I normally go first with the caps. Finally, I mount the resistors to the boards. Alright, all the SMT components are assembled, and now is a good time to clean the board with some alcohol. I prefer to do that before I mount the through hole pots and switches to the board, since they might not be sealed and take damage from the alcohol or flux residues. So, with the PCB cleaned and ready, it's time to collect the through hole components that we need to complete the build. The Tonky Cons, boxed header for a power, 10 microfarad electrolytic caps, 5k pots, Sherry key, the key top, knobs, and finally our 3D printed panel. I'm using a larger tip for this and thicker solder wire. Let's start with a power connector. I use the trick with soldering one leg to attach the connector, and after that I reheat the solder joint and align the connector to make sure that it's properly seated to the PCB. Then I solder the rest of the legs. Next are the electrolytic caps. They are polarized, so the white marking on the component body should be mounted in the same direction as the large white marking on the PCB.
With the component side completed, we move on to the top side of the PCB, where all the pots, jacks and switches are located. Here I have a great help of the 3D printed panel to hold the pots and jacks in place while I'm soldering them to the PCB. Next we have the cherry key. That is a little bit difficult to align, but the panel and the key top can be used to keep it in place while soldering. I soldered one leg first, check the alignment, and then I soldered the next leg. Final step is to attach the knobs. Before we power up the module, it's always a good idea to make a quick check for shorts on the power rails. Next we attach the power cable, turn on the power and check the power consumption. This module draws 10 milliamps on both plus 12 volt and minus 12 volt, which seems like a reasonable consumption for a design with three TL072 op amps. But without further ado, Let's plug it in and listen to it. And here's a clip from the arithmetic build demo that uses this module. Okay, before we end this video, I would like to thank all of you that have watched this series and all of you that has commented and given feedback. I'm very grateful for that and I will take that with me in for the forthcoming builds. I have learned a lot and for every 909 module I have created, I have got great ideas how to improve my modules. The next 909 module in the pipeline is the hand clap voice, which is one of my favorites, so I'm really looking forward to that. I hope that this series have been useful for someone that is on the fence starting with KiCad or maybe thinking about DIY in Eurorack modules and need some ideas how to approach it. The method I use with circuit analysis, breadboarding, PCB design and board bring up is one way of doing this, but not the only way of course. Some people prefer to test design ideas on perfboard or run it in a simulator instead or verify the design on breadboard like I do or maybe start do by doing a PCB right away. So uh, th there are a lot of choices here how to do it. So with that I would like to thank you for watching and I'll see you soon again. Take care.